going live going live live and we are back so i said we would be gone for a few minutes and i didn't lie so now we're back so we're on time <laughs> um it's my absolute pleasure today to welcome rose rogers the assistant public affairs officer for the u.s embassy in port of spain and no stranger to us for common good michelle yin joe the executive director of the World Affairs Council of Kentucky and Southern Indiana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, where should I start? Um, I'm just going to give a bit of a backstory about how this whole thing happened, and then I'm going to bring these two ladies in. So um, back in 2019, I had the opportunity of a lifetime, I would say. And I've had many opportunities over my lifetime, but this one was really a life-changing experience. So I was chosen um, to go on the IVLP, which is the International Visitor Leadership Program, the State Department's premier exchange program. So myself and 16 or so other creators from around the world got the opportunity to spend three weeks in the States learning from our um, counterparts there who were all using the arts to address social issues. So in those 21 days, I visited Washington, DC, Kentucky, Miami, LA. Um, and it was amazing. I mean, even before I left, so you get a dossier and you have every, everyone's bio and stuff. And I'm like, whoa. How was I chosen to be among these heavy hitters from around the world? Um, and we have become a family. We have our WhatsApp group. We speak every day, literally. And they support everything that I do, and I support everything that they do. So it's wonderful. Coming out of that trip, um, my second stop was Louisville. So as I tell the story, I was not that excited to go to Louisville because people were going to some other quote unquote more exciting states and cities. Um, I was like, what is there to do in Kentucky? What is there to do in Louisville? Um, but literally, um, Louisville captured my heart. Um, I felt at home. It felt very much like where I am here now. Um, and the work that was being done there with little resources, um, and the work is amplified. So most of the programs that I have coming out of this exchange were based on the entities that I met there in Louisville. Um, and it's amazing. So we worked with the American um, Printing House for the Blind, the Kentucky School for the Blind, Louisville Story Program, and the African American Heritage Center in Kentucky, um, as well as the Zuru. Um, and they worked with my people here for three months, being mentored and learning from them. And coming out of that is what's happening today. So my cohort is going to present their projects that came out of this member of this mentorship. Yeah. So when I was in Louisville, I did not meet um, Xiaoyin. I would have met with Laura, who was um, the point person for the exchange programs at the time. Um, and we kept in contact, and this is what happened. And now I will bring Zhao Yin in to just talk a, a bit about your experience of working with us and also a bit about the exchange programs that you do, because that is your focus. Sure. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone. And um, again, thank you so much for including me in this kind of a, a full circle of, of sorts for this exchange. Um, it's really a exciting because uh, before our, uh, you know, working with Kevin, we've always done international exchanges, most of these through the uh, ECA, the Education Cultural um, uh, Administration in the, in the State Department. And uh, like the IVLP, as well as other youth exchanges, um, I think, you know, that's, that's, that's something we've done for over 35 years in uh, Kentucky. And so, what we have a lot of experience working on that side where we receive people to Kentucky to really showcase the, you know, the diversity and the, you know, the, the vibrancy of all the different places 
that people go to in the States and kind of break down those stereotypes and barriers of what America is, you know, as opposed to what people see on TV and all of that. So um, that's that's been our work for many years. What makes this particular exchange really, you know, special is that it's, it's really a two-way exchange. Um, and for the kind of one first times for us, we get to have um, our resources, our um, all the people that's doing the great work in Louisville to get them the opportunity to go and meet others, you know, and uh, and be there rather than see them here. Um, obviously, as Kevin will may have mentioned before, this was really kind of conceived as an in-person exchange, right? We were, where we were really hoping that we would have this kind of in-person people coming here for a couple of weeks and then us going over there um, and then having that kind of in-person uh, activity interactions. Of course, that didn't happen, but I have to commend Kevin for his really persistence and his ability to kind of continue with this. We kind of, like everybody else, just pivoted so quickly. Uh, when this all happened, we were right in the middle of I think we just had the uh, you know the proposal approved. Everything was moving mm -hmm. forward. We have our phases all, all laid out, and then we realized this is not going to happen in person. <laughs> so what do we do? Um, but it didn't take long before you know Kevin is like, well, we can still move forward. How do you, how about we do this? And uh, he's been really amazing to work with because he's very responsive. And, um, you know, Kevin's been the person on his side trying to get everybody excited, get everybody into this, despite it being virtual, right? Um, but giving everyone that opportunity to still have that exchange. And what we did on our end was say, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic is that you can't go anywhere. It's not just here, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop any kind of exchange, mm -hmm. right? In fact, it, it just makes it much more valuable and meaningful that we continue this. So we were able to start working with Kevin in identifying the areas uh, that we wanted to focus on and then finding the right fit and resources and, and facilitators here who would be able to you know, be interested, but also be able to really come in and commit some level of their time. And most of them you know, were very, very game for this, right? They, they, we had some initial conversations, we had our information, and they were very excited, you know, even though it hasn't been in person. Um, so we've been really pleased with this, this kind of, for us, what it does is that it, it, it creates a, a model that, uh, you know, something like this, if you can do this virtually, you know, and during this time, you can certainly do it in person. There's a lot of logistics of in person, of course, but it it doesn't, you know, the, a lot of things that you get in person versus virtual, you don't, you know, you're, you're missing things. But the virtual really makes it much more accessible to everyone, right? Yes. I mean, you can do it anywhere. You don't have to worry about the cost and the travel. You, you know, so it's a, it's a trade off. Um, but it's a great model because we can now think about well, Perhaps there's other areas that we can collaborate on. Um, if accessibility in terms of travel is an issue, well, now we know how to do this without thinking about that. And also, how you know, can we expand this in other places uh, as an organization in Kentucky? How else might we be able to offer this kind of opportunity for all the great people that are here to be able to exchange with people in other parts of the world and offer their expertise and that two-way exchange. So I have to say, you know, for us, it's been a really positive experience. And obviously it's a lot of that has to do with working with Kevin and you really do need, uh, I think, and I, I think you would probably say the same, Kevin, is that for something like this to happen, both sides have to be really committed and really be on top of it because it is so easy to just say, it's not gonna work. I can't yeah. get it, uh, you know, and not having that regular com communication, which we did in the beginning. I remember those really nice early morning uh, <laughs> PR that <laughs> Kevin got. I was like, oh, okay, let's do it and see how it works. So, yeah, I, it's been wonderful. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity um, to, to be part of this. Definitely. Um, it has been a pleasure working with you. Um, and I must give thanks to Andy as well. So, Andy is the point person for exchange programs, and she has been wonderful um and definitely this is not the end um so i would have mentioned to andy yesterday that, that we want to do a youth vision to this project um and we will be in touch next week about that 
Um, we are. Uh, we got a grant for it. We so we are we are working on it. So definitely. So your global citizen program is coming to Trinidad and Tobago. But we will talk about that. <laughs> uh, but definitely, showing it has been a pleasure, and I really admire the work that you are doing. And you are a brilliant leader. And I see the way that you interact with your team. And I know that your organization is going to keep growing from strength to strength. So with that, I would like to bring on Rose Rogers. So I met Rose yesterday in prison. So that was wonderful. So it's not my first time meeting her. Um, and Rose is the assistant public affairs officer for the U US Embassy here. And she is new. So many of you who would have been following us, um, the previous public, deputy public affairs officer, Noreen, um, she was the one working with us on this. So now Rose is filling her big shoes. <laughs> um, Rose, welcome. Um, can you tell us a bit about the embassy's role in these cultural exchange programs? Excellent, thank you. And as you pointed out, my predecessor, Noreen, is really the one who spearheaded and launched this partnership. And so all credit really goes for her hard work. I feel like kind of guilty stepping in at the end and being here to be like, yay, everything was great and successful. Um, but <laughs> she did an amazing job of setting it all up. So she definitely left very big shoes to fill. And um, I'm very happy to be here in this role. And it was great to meet you in person yesterday. Um, we had a very socially distant, uh, following kind of all of the restrictions, uh, meeting, meeting, and it was really lovely to be able to, to do that now with things gradually opening up a little bit here. So our role, well, I feel like, and we were talking about this yesterday, this is almost exactly like the heart and spirit of what State Department wants are these exchange programs, these cultural exchange programs that really are encouraging a entrepreneurial spirit, getting people involved, getting people active into, in their passions. And this is one of our premier programs is the IBLP program, which Kevin was part of, which is the one that kind of spearheaded all of this and the catalyst to this entire thing. And this is like a mini IVLP. And so we were describing this as essentially a, a, a continuation of that program. And so we love seeing things like that because with the we offer a wide range of programs. But of course, we love seeing sustainability, seeing these communities, everyone we select for either IVLP, Fulbright, um, we have Hubert Humphrey, we have the American Women Entrepreneur entrepreneurs, any of these programs is kind of geared to taking somebody who hasn't had that experience of meeting their counterparts in the United States, providing them with training, education, and then hoping they come back and do great things with what they learned. And so this is a perfect example of someone who went on one of the cultural exchange programs, these, these leadership programs, and has now returned and created this amazing program and i hope to see this continue and i hope to see many iterations of it because this is exactly something we hope to see when we send uh individuals on on these exchanges and so we do have um lots of various opportunities and it's 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 always exciting when we can work with people to build on those opportunities when they started with us awesome thank you um, Xiaoyin, I, I want to put you on this spot a little bit. Um, I know that your organization um, has been tasked with um, running the Sister Cities program. Could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, because we have people from all over the world actually registered to attend this event. So it may be good to put that out there. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think as most people know, Sister Cities is kind of like one of the early, very, very much of a grassroots people to people exchange developed um, as long as probably the IVLP. And um, it really, it, it's something that kind of it has a brand, a name recognition that most people know about because it's about this pre, I would say pre-globalization days, right? I mean, this is what, this is how people really got to know people is by uh, connecting directly with one city to city um, versus now, I mean, now it seems a little bit quaint, you know, why, why does sister city relationship or what is that? 
how is that really meaningful given how global we are now? Um, so I will say, you know, over time, as the world become more global, the idea of sister cities becomes a little less um, to pe people's minds more uh, less important, right? It doesn't it loses a lot of its um, value, but it continues with most people because a lot of these relationships have uh, you know, have stayed for so long, and through it. Uh, as Rose mentioned, you know, it's really where a lot of those cultural and professional, those kinds of exchange, youth exchanges and educational exchanges came out of. Um, to this day, you know, people who participate in a lot of these exchanges, they, it still stays with them and they, they continue to support it because it's such a memorable experience for them. It's, it's life changing because a lot of times the exchanges occur when they are just going into adulthood. <laughs> you know, going into the place and opening their minds is like, oh, you know, the world's a little bit bigger beyond my neighborhood or my little, my city here. And I think, um, so, you know, we took over Sister Cities just a, over a year ago when, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and that was hard because obviously Sister Cities has always been very much of a person to person exchange, right? Literally people to people in person. Mm -hmm. um, making, having to pivot from that to more of a virtual has been a little bit more challenging. Um, a lot of other organizations very quickly try to figure out, well, what can we do? And I think with all kinds of exchanges, it's kind of made made it much more accessible, right? The possibilities yeah. are great. Now I can, you know, just Zoom or get, get on some kind of, a, a, you know, virtual meeting and just see you. Um, so it's that, not, that kind of a medium between the in-person and, and the, you know, the phone call calls, right? The conference calls. Thank God that, you know, that's no longer there. So we've kind of moved on. Um, but I will say that, you know, the goal for most sister cities is still to move back to some kind of an in-person exchange, because that is really where, you know, the, the ability to see and feel and touch things that are very different over, you know, that's from where you are. Um, it really is that, that the part of experience you cannot replicate on on a virtual meeting, right? But the good thing about the virtual is that it brings success, uh, you know, that accessibility to people because, you know, a lot of these exchanges are very expensive. Um, you know, they're very expensive and it's for, you know, for sister cities, a lot of these are cultural exchanges, youth exchanges, and traditionally, you know, unless you have the means or you had some great funding to support it, we don't always get to reach the students that really can, uh, uh, you know, appreciate it and can really uh, mm -hmm. benefit from that kind of international exchange. So I think, you know, that is the kind of silver lining of, of the pandemic, if you will, to be able to introduce that even from a virtual sense. I think it for us, it's just a matter of somehow normalizing some of this so that it's not a choice of in-person versus this and that this is worse than this. Um, it, because I think over time, it really kind of can inspire interest before they make that big jump of money investment to go to that in person. So um, that you know, that's that's where we are with that. But you know, I will say most of the sister cities, I think most cities are still very, very committed to the idea. But it's not mm -hmm. easy. You know, we are very global. Like, you know, I don't ha we don't have a sister city relationship with Arima, but right. we have this exchange, right? Um, and we and, and it doesn't matter whether we have sister cities, no. But uh, sister cities, you know, what it does is a city to city, mayor to mayor relationship. Mm -hmm. It takes that kind of commitment. And there could be really good benefits for economic development because you do get some preferential, maybe some preferential treatment. You have a mutual agreement, a commitment to that relationship. So you want to be able to nurture it, but it takes a lot of nurturing. Um, so some of these relationships come out of an an exchange or a relationship right. that's uh, that, that that was different. So you know, if you were to talk to me now about, hey, I'm really interested in maybe about doing Arima and uh, Louisville sister cities, how do we do that? You know, that becomes then an easier thing to do. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, that's, yeah, that's that's pretty much how sister cities functions these days. But I think there are specific spaces that I can occupy, um, but you know, it, it's just a matter of question, where, where is that space and how do we make where? it mm -hmm. get much more aware for everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Um, Rose, I'm back to you now. So um, as we said, Rose has been here for a few weeks. Um, so Rose is literally living a cultural exchange experience right now through her job. Um, 
how has Trinidad been for you, Rose, so far? Um, it has been amazing. I am a huge fan of cultural exchanges, uh, being a public affairs officer. <laughs> and so coming to new countries, exploring new cultures, getting to taste new foods. I, I love all of it. And so far, I've already been diving just fully into everything I can do here in Trinidad and Tobago. And I mean, I've had samplings of doubles and roti and bacon mm. shark and uh, I've gone on to Bamboo <laughs> Cathedral and I'm going to, to, to another hike, um, to the Three Pools hike. And so it's, I am trying to do and see as much as I possibly can. Cause I think that, I mean, I, I agree that the virtual environment definitely has been a great way to get cultural exchanges going and get like expands audiences to people you never could have reached before. I mean, there's people who don't have access to the funding, who can't get to places. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful way to get it. But I also think that it, it, it does always have a cost benefit, like the actually being somewhere, walking on the streets, being able to taste that food yourself, like it does create such a deep impression. And so I feel like that is a little harder to recreate in the virtual environment. So it's always kind of this trade off of, of and we're, we see that ourselves with our current programming, everything having to shift to virtual. And virtual. it is wonderful, like we've been able to grow the audiences and the number of participants and programs. And yet at the same time, it's always this trade off of then they don't get to taste doubles. Like I <laughs> loved being able to start my very first day of work here having doubles. And so now I, I, I learned I ate it wrong. So I've learned. <laughs> yes, there's a, there's a technique. There's a, yeah, there's a technique. <laughs> there's a technique. <laughs> so that's part of cultural exchanges is learning the proper ways to eat the local food and kind of being open to that. So I'm, I'm loving Definitely. it. So far. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy that you're loving it. And then we can, we can, we can see the joy on your face. So I know that we are happy to have you here as well. Xiao Yin has not had the chance to visit us as yet, so we need to rectify that very soon. We need to definitely work on that, and I need to visit again. Louisville is one of my favorite places now. I mean, I am in touch with most of the organizations that I would have met with. Even before I conceptualized this project, I kept in touch with them. So um, I always knew that, that something could happen, and after going to these four different states, Really, I only kept in touch with the people from Louisville. So I guess it was supposed to happen. And I guess that they resonated with me the most. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, I think I, I, so to, we, go ahead. I was going to say, we always welcome you back if you ever want to come back. We're always looking for people to come to Louisville and, uh, and enjoy. There's a lot of things to do. I, as you know, Kevin, you probably, you said when you, when you first, figure out where you're going to go compared to some of your other IVLP uh, friends were, where is Louisville? Where is Kentucky? I felt the same way because when I moved to Kentucky, I was saying, where the heck is Kentucky? I mean, I've never been to a place this far. And I like, you know, far south, I've always been on the East Coast. And um, and, and and I come here and it's, it's such an accessible city. And it, there's a lot of things to do. It's easy to get around. A lot. As you probably found yeah. out, right? It's a lot of things. You don't even know, what, what do I do today? What are the, you know, there's so many choices. So yeah, come back. But I, we would love to go over to I'm coming you. soon, I'm coming soon. <laughs> I'm coming soon. Yeah. Yes, and then you come as well. No, but then it's just, you know, the food, the art, the culture, the people. Um, Louisville is also what's called a compassionate city. So, you know, they welcome a lot of refugees. And so it's very, very diverse. And I found that um, interesting. Um, and it's great. So there was food from everywhere, people from everywhere, experiences. I just really, really love it. Um, so we're going to close shortly from this presentation. But um, I want to ask each of you, um, for you personally, so I'll start with Rose. So personally, Rose, take off your professional hat now. So what does cultural exchange mean to you? Oh, so to me personally, cultural mm -hmm. exchange yeah. means I think opening doors, opening windows. To me, it is getting insight into a different world, getting insight into the thinking of someone different for me, somebody who came from a different background, but also realizing through that exchange that there's so many fundamental similarities. 
Like while there's these wonderful differences that are the flavors and spices of every culture, fundamentally it's recognizing the common thread of humanity. And so for me personally, like I find just cultural exchanges are this beautiful window and door into another human, another life. And I, I had my first exchange at 19 and I had I actually grew up in Tennessee, so wow. not too far from Kentucky. And so I, I have been to in Louisville Kentucky. as well. But I remember 19, I left the country for the first time and it was just, I felt like all these windows around me opened and I could see so many different things. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. Over to you, Xiaoyan. Well, everything that Rose said, <laughs> but I will add uh, just, you know, two things. One is that I think, uh, you know, cultural exchange is really, it's not, in many ways, we think of it as learn, learning about other people and all of that, but it's really about learning your, about yourself because through right. that exchange, you really kind of understand what is it about your culture? Where is it that you come out of? And you know, you kind of, it, it helps to clarify your thinking about what makes me different, right? And what is it about my context, my environment that has kind of promoted certain values in what I believe, right? So it's really a, in many ways, it's it's about knowing other people for sure, because that, but that really helps to you to reflect on about what you are and who you are. Um, and, and, and your environment, your cultural uh, space. And in that vein, I would say cultural exchange doesn't have to occur overseas, right? It occurs every day within your yes. own space, right? Because that's when we talk about cultural, there's so many differences. Like you said, Kevin, there's so many, you know, you see different foods in, uh, you know, in Louisville and, and anywhere, They through those things, you see it right there. It's different even th because they're not in their own space. I think there's, you know, that the idea of a cultural exchange is happening all the time, right? I mean, when we talk about culture, culture becomes an other, but it's not an other. It's really about what's around us. And it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, religious or, or, or other kinds, you know, that culture that we tend to think about. I mean, we talk about culture as like, there's a Southern culture here, right? There's a, a Northeast culture. I mean, that's, I think um, we, especially, especially nowadays, where you know, where the world is, there's probably a more of an urgent need, personally, think, me talking, thinking of that we need to mo be much more appreciative of the local culture, the cultural around, yeah. you know, everything, not just constantly about what is, you know, outside of us. Um, so I think, you know, it's just a little bit more you know, understanding culture in a broader sense um, while appreciating, you know, the core of it, what it is that, you know, that really, as Rose said, make us all <clears throat> the same, right? We're all that, that common thread of humanity. Um, but looking at it in terms of perspective, not just uh, uh, over, but really within and around us. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Um, wow. So the idea that culture is happening around us all the time, and I think that is where I'm going to close. Um, this has been a wonderful discussion. Um, very happy to see this project um, wind up. Um, we're not quite done as yet. We have a lot of stuff over the next month or so that's still going to be released in terms of content coming out of the program. Um, but we, I think we wrap up officially in October. So until then, we would have some stuff coming out still. Um, definitely, I'm hoping that we can continue our partnership with the World Affairs Council in Kentucky. Um, not hoping we will continue that work. Um, it may not take the same shape, but we're definitely going to keep working together. And I want all of our Common Good family to stay tuned. As soon as Jawin and I get our heads together, we're going to definitely present what our next step is, because I know that we want to continue this relationship. Um, it has been fantastic. Rose, definitely, um, we want to thank the embassy for facilitating this program. And it started with an opportunity, which was the IVLP, and now we're just turning into a movement, which is for common good. And definitely, we are hoping to continue our relationship with the embassy here as well um, in whatever form it takes. And I know that we will continue to do great things together. 
So with that, um, I'd like to say thank you so much for giving me some time on your Sunday morning. Um, up next, I do want you guys to stay tuned um, for our keynote speaker, Ms. Indrani Goradia, who is a global philanthropist and advocate for women's health and the founder of RAFT. Um, she is coming to speak to us about how advocates, like all of us, we're all advocates in our different spheres. How can we take care of ourselves? How can we avoid compassion burnout? How can we care for ourselves before we care for others? So Indrani is my close friend um, and yeah, she is going to really shake us up this morning. So yes, so thank you Indrani, she'll be on in the next five minutes or so. Thank you so much. Thank you.